Hi, how are you? Terry Daly here again. Thank you very much for tuning in. And for the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to deal with a particular case study at one of my own product ranges. I may have mentioned previously that as well as being fortunate to work for companies in the past that had decent budgets and decent R&D departments, I've also taken product ideas of my own from concept stage and move them right through the process to successful marketing so i know exactly what it's like to be that sole entrepreneur that has to do everything themselves on a micro budget and i must say i have probably found this particular exercise to be the most beneficial in terms of experience and terms of reward in every way so let's jump in straight away right the particular product range that we're going to talk about today is a range called Safehold Picture Hooks. And I've been involved in numerous different products throughout the last 10 years. But this was probably one of the most successful from a marketing perspective. And basically what it was, was a premium range of picture hook with safety and security features built into them. So what it meant was that if you were in a cafe or restaurant or a public place, somebody couldn't just lift it off and steal it away very easily. Or if you were in the home, little Johnny couldn't knock it off the wall by mistake. And particularly if you happened to be in a part of the world where there were earthquake areas. So uh, basically, I developed this range myself and designed it and had the tooling manufactured in Ireland and uh, produced my first uh, batch of product um, in Ireland and then managed to find a couple of distributors to distribute it for me throughout retail outlets uh, nationwide. Um, or so I thought. Unfortunately, it never works out quite that easy. Distributors will certainly stock your product for you and they will promote it to a degree, but they certainly won't really drive it, mostly because they probably have hundreds or even thousands of other lines. So it can get lost very, very easily. So effectively, what I needed to do was get out there and drive it myself. And I must say that I probably resisted the sales aspect of this project for longer than I should have done, primarily because it scared the living daylights out of me. And the prospect of picking up the phone, cold calling, and also pulling up outside strange shops and that knot in the stomach and that usual experience that we all go through. Now, the good news is that that does get easier. It doesn't necessarily get easy, but there are ways of making it easier. And we might deal with that in another video. Um, so anyway, I, I spent about one and a half to two years traipsing around the country selling this range of product and really just getting by and in, in many cases not even getting by. So during the same period I was trying to make inroads with B&Q in the UK. So it took me about a year and a half but I remember it very very clearly. It was still in the days of fax machines and I got a fax in one day with an order from B&Q for 50 grand. And all of a sudden, two things happened. One, my wife started talking to me again. And secondly, I could pull into a petrol forecourt and put more than five euro worth of petrol into my car. So effectively, it began to grow and develop uh, from there. And also, in the meantime, I was chipping away at the, uh, the, the US um, market where as, as many of you may or may not know, it's a very, very difficult market to try and get a foothold in even when you have a premium product with unique features such as this one here. Uh, so I found myself uh, a distributor there, but no great shakes. You know, they were doing maybe 10 grand a year with me. Uh, and then uh, about a year ago, I get an email from them saying that Home Depot, uh, which would be the largest DIY retailer in the world, were interested in trialing this uh, particular range um, in store. And the impetus behind their decision to trial this in store was all of the earthquakes that happened to be going on around the world at that time. Tokyo was being hit, Italy was being hit, various different places in the US were being hit. So for many people, this became a must-solve problem as opposed to a wouldn't mind solve problem. And that's one of the criteria that we will expand on further on in some of the other videos. So one of the things that I have observed over the years is that I'm, I'm fortunate at this stage to still have a revenue stream from this particular range of product even 10 years on. 
inflation. But that said, that revenue stream has gone up and down like a roller coaster over that last 10 years. And there would have been other products that may have had a lifespan of a year or two years. These days, the way things change so quickly, getting a product that has a, a life cycle of two or three years is, is probably kind of quite rare, particularly in the technology end. But the point is that it doesn't really matter how long the life cycle is, provided that you're making money um, on, on that particular product. And one of the other things that, that I've learned is in terms of micro enterprise and SMEs, one of the single biggest advantages that we have is our ability to change and pivot and adapt very, very quickly. Big companies simply can't do this. So let me follow on now and tell you a little bit more about the story about behind this product range. So initially I started off with one size of hook which was the large one and continued with that for about a year and a half and then I expanded and developed uh, the medium and the small. At this point in time I also made the decision to go to China for the manufacturer and the tooling in order to try and keep it competitive and uh, retain a margin. Uh, and that's worked out very, very well. And I still continue to trade with, with China to this day and have some very useful contacts out there. Equally so, point of sale is uh, critical to, to this um, particular project or any project. Not only is it very, very important to have a unique selling point in terms of your product, but it's also very, very important to be unique in terms of your marketing and your selling and your point of sale and to differentiate yourself from the sea of other products that, that are out there. Uh, and one of the great challenges with, with this in store was that there were much bigger companies that had vast ranges of picture hooks and mine at this stage really only had one and it was just simply getting lost so I needed to come up with a very innovative way to make it stand out to make it get notes noticed and also to differentiate it from the sea of ordinary kind of picture hooks that were already out there and had been for many many decades so this panel was effectively what we came up with and we were able to mount this literally within two to three minutes to the uprights of shelving systems within stores at large DIY stores and um, it was using space that otherwise wasn't being used at all plus the fact it didn't cost anything so it was absolutely fantastic and from that point things really began to grow much more significantly and we uh, saw the sales um, grow uh, almost immediately from putting these in which was fantastic. Another thing that, that I would mention is that I am a great believer in good graphic design. It's very, very important. And the uh, particular graphic design that went in to this product and the range, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye in terms of the subtleties, the choice of the color, why those particular colors were chosen, knowing who your uh, ideal customer is, and making sure that the message in both the the colors are pitched towards that, that particular audience. So there is nothing worse than cheap graphic design. So just bear that in mind, regardless of whether it's a product or a service that you're developing. Uh, lots of free publicity to be had when you're developing a new product or a new service. And this was just one example of a national newspaper that ran a, a free um, PR article on the product range. But there were dozens of others that were quite happy to do so um, also. A little bit of work involved in it, but lots of free publicity out there if you have a good, innovative new product or new service idea. Let's have a look at just the evolution of the, uh, the, the picture hook itself. This would have been one of the very, very um, initial crude prototypes and also some very crude kind of packaging to go with it. But it was enough to get out there, to get going, to get in front of people, and also, more importantly, to get good feedback as to whether was this worth pursuing further or should I just drop it and move on to my next idea. So anyway, the feedback was very, very good, and the prototypes developed, and so too did the packaging design. So that ultimately, uh, this was the kind of blister pack that we ended up um, using. So just to kind of sum up on this particular video, I hope you have found this interesting. In the live workshops, we can expand on, on these things a little bit more and we can also take questions. But in the meantime, dream your dream, be clear, organize a plan to get there, take action and never give up.
Uh, so that's it for the moment, folks. Hope to talk to you again soon. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.